Hi everyone, we are here at Snowflake Summit and look who are with me, Paul, Field CDO at Immuda. Paul, welcome to The Robert Show. It's your debut. I'm super excited to chat and learn more about what's happening at Snowflake Summit. Yeah, it's been a great summit so far. Uh, it's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Uh, so many people showed up to the hands-on lab. Yeah. They got direct access into Immuda, yeah. writing their own policies, provisioning access, and all of it happened immediately. Uh, which is fantastic. I think, yeah, when I was looking at the, you know, obviously the sessions as well, and if there's a full room of people kind of, you know, doing hands-on, it becomes so interesting. I'm pretty sure you got, like, good feedback, You people are excited about it. Do you want to share a little about the workshop as well? Yeah, absolutely. So with inside the workshop, people were logging in, they're getting access to things, yep. they're writing policies. A um, lot of great questions though, Yeah. right? So people are asking questions about how are you provisioning direct access to individual tables? Right. Um, how are you handling all of the masking requests that are coming in? Yeah. Uh, how are you handling all that and how is AI changing all of this as well? Exactly, just on this topic itself, when we talk about AI, we can't miss AI for uh, you know anything. I, I'm kind of, you know, I've been doing this and I love uh, learning more about things and how governance piece is also changing with AI. Yeah. So my curious question is, how is AI changing the volume and velocity of data access request in ways that, you know, traditional governance uh, used to not, maybe, yeah. Right. So can you tell us a little about that? Absolutely, there, there's a lot of systems out there that people kind of reuse to try and request access to data. And when they do that, right, it, it, they're not really built to handle those kinds of requests. Right. Especially with AI. Yeah. AI can't really wait, right? And so if it takes two weeks to get access to data, the machine's sitting there doing, just waiting, right? That's not yeah. gonna work for AI. Yeah. And so you need to be uh, an easy way to classify that data in order to, to auto-provision a lot of those types of things. And it needs to be a very specific kind of request that comes out as well, yeah. right? They want just that table, or they need to have that table, but you need to make sure that it's secured in a way that they're not seeing the sensitive data. Also, they gotta handle the exceptions as well. What if they need to unmask a certain uh, field or see an additional row of data? Traditional systems can't handle that. Yeah, I think that is a very important point when it comes to you know the traditional systems and now with AI, there's much more capabilities uh, for the users out there. I'm kind of also curious when, uh, I know you talk to a lot of different customers from different industries too. How are you kind of looking at uh, you know industries operating uh, with AI uh, when it comes to governance uh, and how are they looking at the initiatives where they can scale? Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, a lot of customers are, are really curious because they're trying to do these things manually themselves. Right. Uh, they're trying to build you know, automation scripts to be able to handle these things. And, and there's so many different pieces of it. You need to be able to scan that data very quickly because data's coming at you so fast. And there's more and more people that are accessing so and putting in requests for data. Yep. And you need to make sure that it's available because that all that data has a lifetime to it. Right, so you need to be able exactly. to provision it and get access to it, but make sure that it's done securely very quickly. Fantastic insights, Paul, there. And uh, I'm also wanting to learn a little bit about building, right? So how do you build governance systems that can automatically adapt the new AI use cases and the access patterns as well? Absolutely, so one of the things we're seeing in the, in the industry as far as trends go is a lot of security frameworks. Yep. People are trying to implement these types of things so that it's very easy to assess uh, the risk level, yep. as well as the individual user, right? What is their risk level to coming in and requesting that kind of level of access? Yep. Yep. How do we automate a lot of those types of things to Very make important. this go a lot faster, yep. right? So I should be able to ask a question into our governance system to understand, hey, should this person have access? What's the risk level associated with those types of things? Exactly. And so those are a lot of the trends that we're seeing. We're getting a lot of questions about this as well, right? Yeah. People are yeah. trying to, to write these things manually. Yeah. Um, and they're super curious of how do you give people just that column of access or so just true. that row of access. Yeah. Whether or not that be a financial industry that's trying to protect their legal hierarchies or whether or not it's right. healthcare that's trying to protect the sensitive PII. Yeah, I think uh, it is important and when you're kind of catering to uh, the regulated industries, it just becomes so much important for them to understand that, yeah. okay, how do I have just that access, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Uh, what's next that you're kind of seeing in the governance space when it comes to, you know, obviously AI kind of plays now a very important role. We, we are seeing that in not only just in terms of scaling, but also getting things done faster too. Getting so what's, what's, what's your, um, 
you know, vision in the next three to six months, or what are you seeing that, okay, Robert, this is going to pick up uh, a little more? Absolutely. We're definitely seeing, since you're starting to use AI around agents, you're going to need some agents to do some auto approving yep. as well. For sure. Right? So if this something is low risk, right, I'm, I'm requesting something to, you know, it's not a high risk item, yep. I need to start auto approving some of those things. Yep. Right, and build in those classification frameworks to really enable you to be able to do those types of things. And uh, one more question that I have is like uh, around the use cases itself, which is where uh, you, I'm pretty sure you all have like uh, regulated industries you all work with. But what about industries where you know governance can be done in a way which is uh, a little different from you know the regulated industries. How do you kind of see, uh, a, like even if for small or mid-sized companies, how do you kind of see them leveraging AI uh, for governance as well? Yeah. I know for larger enterprises, you all cater at a different scale, but what about the mid and small size companies? Too? Right, some, some of the smaller companies yeah. and those types of things, right? We're hearing kind of the same trends that are okay. happening at the large companies as well as the small companies. Okay. I just spoke to someone here at the booth today that asked me that exact question. Exactly. Yeah, right. it was, uh, they're really struggling because if you're trying to build in those types of tools to your current process today, how do I request access to a group that is provisioned to give me access to 20 tables when really I just need to give them the access to one table. The other 19 are highly sensitive. Right, and what would be your advice for those enterprise leaders, the CIOs, the security officers? Uh, what should they keep in mind when they are implementing AI? Uh, any thoughts? Absolutely, so with things like, you only have so many stewards inside the company yeah. that can do these kinds of approvals. You're going to need to automate more and more of it. That really requires a lot of frameworks and a lot of automation in order to be able to scan and quickly identify these types of things. Yeah. So you can automate it across your entire company. These are fantastic insights, Paul. One last question for you is if folks want to learn more about the things that you're doing in this space, where can they follow you, but also stay updated with all the things that Immuta is doing, where can they do that? Yeah, absolutely. Head to our website. Uh, I personally write a lot of the blogs as oh, well nice. on some of these uh, insights around security, Very postures, cool. the things that we're seeing out there, uh, myself and uh, several others at Immuta as well. So I love it. Definitely check us out at Immuta.com. Fantastic. And folks can follow you on LinkedIn? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, this is great, Paul. Such a pleasure. We'll keep the conversation going, but uh, great work that you all are doing in the governance space. I think AI is now a big part that plays and agents as well. So I'm excited about this space moving and great work by Muta. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us today.